proud of ourselves that we're standing up here and we will become a part of history. We're actually defending the conservatory. We're actually here to make everybody change his mind and stay alive and stay alive for many, many centuries to come and make kids love music and keep the music alive. And we should be proud of ourselves. for the summer courses of the McGill Music Conservatory by the two deans, the Dean Going and the Dean Danyami to the Faculty of Music oh, from August on. How does one even process that joke or a hoax or something like that, a spam or something? So I literally had to read it twice. Message from Linda, Fox, what's that? I found it from Facebook. It looked so unreal. Literary moment, I was thinking, okay, so I'm working from for an institution that actually, when I was thinking, students preparing for the second half of their two exam, because the McGill Conservatories, it has a very strong system of examining its students, and these students get credit them to get better places in universities, in colleges, us learning music to be better world. So constantly going, my head was, okay, so I have half of the collegial two piano exam. Now what? Words who I'm taking since 20 years, teaching them with a McGill Conservatory of Music, and they are almost graduating in one or two years. What about the responsibility to my students? So all of all its heads in that very moment, building or in that building or in your living room it's a vocation you cannot give up it's not a job to give up but the students who are rich because of the culture and the music they were getting that they were able to attend what happens to them and oh god in this town and amount of culture we, you cannot destroy it just because you decide oh it's not viable there are ones by friends by uh, colleagues by even by students ella would say hello hello how old are you ella i'm eight and what do you hear uh because i don't want uh, uh it's too close you don't want this institution to close. I cannot close. I'm open. <laughs> I don't want the institution to close. Why? Uh, because uh, I already learned her for many years and I want to continue. Did you hear? Yes. She's, she is... What, what's your age? Eight. She's eight and she already learned it for many years. Please remember that. At eight years old, you are already a student with McGill Conservatory for many years. And what do you study?
I'm here today because the conservatory was very important to me. About 60 years ago, I started doing piano exams at the conservatory. Yeah. It's that that gave me the confidence to um, to know that perhaps I was good enough to study music in the future. It's a huge loss, uh, first of all, for our students that we are here for them today. Uh, but it's a huge loss for, for our colleagues, for the teachers, and for the entire community who was capable to come and attend uh, our concerts, our uh, master classes, or whatever the activities the Conservatory of Music was producing. Um, I'm really sad to see it go. Um, it's a place where musicians of any level or any music, pretty much any instrument, children, adults can go learn music. And I think that's once that resource is lost in Montreal, it kind of cuts off even the idea of future musicians, perhaps in Montreal or even at the school. This is like a feeder to the to to the um, to the university, and if we have that if that feeder goes, then um, we're going to have less students in the future uh, in the music department. I have done half of my exam so far, and the next the other half was I was supposed to do it in November, but I can't if we're going to close the conservatory. The university have decided to close this great great program, a century old program. They have all money to build statues, yes. but not money for the music. They say they have no space to teach. They have no classes to teach. McGill has millions of square footage. Millions of square footage that could accommodate us all. The lack of transparency and the, the lack of uh basically of communication between us and Shuling has produced this monster. This was a decision that uh, involved no consultation with uh, my uni in the process, no, uh, and that is uh, surprising to me. I think they could have involved uh, students and staff and workers in, in the process of deciding what to do. I think that there's a lot of good reasons to keep uh, the institution going. I think that the low enrollment that they spoke of was due to uh, concerns around remote teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic. And now that we are back to full in person, I don't think that will be as much of an issue anymore. They're saying that they they want to close this because the, book, the books don't add up, you know, but nobody's books add, adds up uh, at the moment. You know, everyone's in debt. The conservatory was like the only way that I was able to do music. My mom doesn't. My mom doesn't let me study music really, so the conservatory was my way to like. Sorry, wow. It was my way to mix university and CJEP with music while I was studying sciences, computer science. I was still able to do music on the side and develop myself for five years straight. I don't think that we were taking into consideration that um, the pandemic put everything online, and even though the university was back in person, the conservatory has been fully online for two years, which makes a really big difference. <laughs> I teach music theory at the university, and I think like a lot of people here, this decision was an unpleasant surprise to me. It seems very short-sighted to say that the conservatory didn't make money during the pandemic, so we have to close it seems very naive to me. One of the things that I would really like to um, call out for this administration is that we very recently passed a new strategic plan for the School of Music with some objectives. And a lot of these are the kinds of things that you would expect, like, oh, research excellence, we're going to increase our diversity. But one of the specific research directions that we all just agreed on as a School of Music was community outreach. That's what we said we would do. So to turn around and to close the conservatory, which is the arm of our community outreach, the way in which we engage with the community, the way in which we help the community engage with the music that we make here is deeply, deeply hypocritical. So I would like to say to the current administration, were these just empty words? Or are you going to put your money where your mouth is? Thank you. Thank you. When I wanted to speak as a uh, former music student here at McGill University. I needed to speak because music saved my life in so many ways other than just learning it. It 
gave me a community. It gave me so much support, and it just changed my life forever. And everyone here who's ever done music knows that music is not just some hobby, like our government would like to say. It's an identity. It's a lifestyle. It's part of who we are. And this decision to close this conservatory is going to shut down this community that has been years, hundreds of years in the making. We need to stop. We need to stop with this financial decision. It's ridiculous. We've heard these excuses so many times. Over and over again, we will not fall for it again. Save the conservatory. Shame on McGill University and long live music. Thank you so much. One more little comment. There is more food. Please do enjoy. With